Hello, welcome on back to the MEC. We're ready to get into more of the heated action here, and it's going to be a fun time. Benedictine versus Cornell is going to be our matchup we're going to be witnessing here today. And yo, we're pedal against the metal here. Cap, are you prepared? We just got done with a very close series. Are you? Are we expecting another one that goes the distance? I mean, honestly, I'm hoping so, but I got to tell you, that was one tough act to follow, especially the <laughs> Bayonetta from Ashland putting on an absolute clinic. Honestly, that match wouldn't have been what it was without that player. Uh, so again, one big tough act to follow. Let's see if it can be as we get ready to head into our next matchup here. Let's see what comes out first from both sides as this matchup is nearly ready to get underway. Let's see here, Benedictine, Cornell, Esports, they're loading in. They're seeing what we got. What is it going to be? It's a Wolf versus Yoshi. So we're starting off with the Tims to start things off from the side of Cornell. That we are. And, you know, we've already gotten to see a lot of Falco today, but I do like the Wolf pick as well. I think they are one of the more interesting characters from the Star Fox universe. So definitely love whenever we get to see them. But they are going to be going up against this Yoshi. And already Yoshi landing the almighty headbutt to try and start things off. But we're still just about even here. A nice, good exchange from both sides. And the time is uh looking to try and get this wolf in there continue you don't want to ever let yoshi kind of control the pace of the match because they have a lot of tools to be able to just constantly make you play their game they have pressure that they can put in through those egg tosses the tims that could come in the brah, that they can drop onto you as well don't want to deal with any of that so wolf going to go ahead and uh try and just keep in the face of this yoshi make sure that cornell is not able to build any kind of tempo for themselves you have got to avoid the tempo of the tims that's your most dangerous tempo right there meanwhile yoshi <laughs> able to recover nicely getting wolf back onto stage looking to get that up tilt not able to land it unfortunately and again wolf really doing a good job of going in and out of that defense finding those openings oh. but guess who also found an opening yoshi able to get that up smash to get the first stock off of wolf yeah that's the disgusting thing about yoshi they can absolutely just smash you in an instant with those tims that's why we always talk about them being so dangerous but the claws of wolf are also very dangerous as well stock to a stock but 50 percent percentage builds up onto the wolf and now this yoshi it feels like they are feeling themselves on up they are ready to get in there they said you want to go ahead and you know what scratch and claw your way through it's okay i've been scratching and clawing my whole life as they get another stock taken out yoshi takes no prisoners Oh, absolutely not again they're, they're sick and tired of the the mario luigi abuse and now they're taking out some of that pent-up frustration onto wolf but wolf also going to be able to land a good chunk of damage as well trying to even the stocks right back on up and so far they're doing a fantastic Ooh. job putting yoshi back into the sky until finally they do manage to find themselves back center stage but the damage has already been done yeah, no, the damage is, you're in for a world of pain at this current moment in time. This Yoshi is going to continue throwing out these eggs, continue throwing out that hurt, try to chip away. If you lose out on this thought, that's great, that's fine. You still have a lot that you need to work on. 40% onto the Wolf, the Yoshi is at their last stock. It's a stop to a stop, but Wolf, go ahead and getting that aggression going for themselves. They've downloaded a little bit of what this aggression, this Yoshi wants to bring in and said, you know what, cool, bet. I'm just going to keep scrapping. I'm going to keep clawing because Wolf is no stranger to it either. Here we go. I mean, again, this is really anybody's game at this point. Although Yoshi does have a decent lead in the damage, but it is ever getting so closer here. One solid hit from either side should be enough to get the stock in. That could have, should have, could have been it, but it is not. As now we are going right back to it. But look at this wolf able to come through and get the final stock off of Cornell. And now it will be a one stock lead for them good stuff coming in from the squad here and hey look, look that's what, exactly what you wanted if you're playing as wolf at that current moment in time you know yoshi's going in they're going with that flurry of kicks all the time right they're getting you with that aerial hey yo go ahead and punish that send them up into the skies they want to jump up there so badly send them flying well let's see next up from the side of cornell 
they have a couple very intriguing members that they could bring in here. They're going to start off with the Terry as their second one to go ahead and punch away at this wolf. Yeah, well, let's see if they can. And now we're on Final Destination as well. So you know, I haven't gotten to see a lot of this stage, you know, but I'm I'm honestly a fan of it. I wish I could see more of it. So here we go. Three stocks to one. Now let's see if Terry can just wrap things up and bring us into the next fight. Or will Wolf be able to take a stock or two off of Terry? It is the question we have to ask ourselves here. But this Terry is a hard-hitting character, right? This is a character that you can easily punish wolf if they go for a move that is counterable it is something that these we've seen time and time again once that go button comes in it is a very valuable resource wolf doing a good job actually making sure that this terry does not have an easy go button is now available and you can see they're looking to confirm those jabs into confirm boom boom right to the heart what a heart stopping performance coming in and it has been even up, Benedictine Cornell, even stock to stock. This has the makings of an absolute banger of a matchup, similar to what we saw in the previous matchup as well. Let's see if we can go the full distance as we get ready to load into our next matchup. Let's see what will be the answer to this Terry pick. Already starting out pretty good and also giving credit to the Wolf that they almost were able to take that stock off. But let's see who will be coming out and who will be the selection made to answer against Terry. And here we go. It will be <laughs> Banjo and Kazooie. Here we go. Banjo and Kazooie. This is the missing puzzle piece for Benedictine inside of this matchup. I, I like the idea of this, actually, into the Terry. Terry uh, not going to have the, the funnest of times, the, uh, the variety of things that are going to be spit out back at to him. And Banjo could be a very tricky character to actually go against. It was one of the characters that a lot of people were like, what, what is this character doing? This character is insane when they first released. Yeah, well, so far, it looks like Terry is having absolutely no problem whatsoever. Already in the danger, in the red, 100 plus percent onto Banjo and Kazooie. All it's going to take is one solid hit from the Terry, and it should be able to confirm that first stock. But Banjo, so far, able to eat up a lot of that damage. And now, finally, they're going to start striking back. Yeah, miss on the dash attack is a big with punished very swiftly good stuff from Cornell as now they have taken the lead finally in favor of themselves and the percentage getting right back up as you can see that 41 percent from Terry Terry just going forward letting the fist do the talking they don't need to find any missing puzzle piece they just need to find the face of this bear and sock it in the face <laughs> well, let's see if they can. I mean, they've already gotten the first stock off, so already they're off to a fantastic start. Looking to get yet another, as you can see, Banjo and Kazooie, respectfully, are in that 100% tile, and they can't recover. They're too far gone. And now Terry are one stock away from getting a clean sweep on this Banjo and Kazooie. Yeah, they took out the last stock of the wolf. They've taken out two stocks of Banjo. And what resources have they had to spend besides a couple beads of sweat to come about on their face? They have been doing a great job controlling. This Banjo has not been able to put up any offense against Terry. Terry has been the one who's been constantly getting in. You are just in range of Terry's fist, and that is right where Terry wants you. You can see it already. Boom, boom, right down into the blast zone. A clean sweep of the second player of Benedictine University. Well, there you have it. Cornell Esports able to go up three stocks over Benedictine is now we get ready to see who is going to come out to try and answer against this Terry because right now they, they are looking really strong and it's going to be a Ganondorf. Wait, is this this is two different schools playing Ganondorf? What's going on here? This is this is not what I was expecting. We went from Cloud being the most contested character inside of it which i'm like you know what sure you know what he's a very popular character a lot of people like him even if they don't think he's the best character in the game they like to play him because cloud's a cool character sure ganondorf is somebody i do not get to see and now we got two colleges breaking out ganondorf himself the big heavy 
Now, this is going to be interesting. And honestly, I kind of favor the Ganon in this fight just because Terry, they have to rush in a lot to try and do a lot of their dash attacks. And now, speaking of Go Meter, also ready as well, but they're not going to be able to use it. Ganon able to take that first stock. And it was just by utilizing the fact that Terry, they have to dash in a lot for their attacks, which leaves them open for Ganon to just lay down some of those heavy smashes. Yeah, Ganondorf's this big, meaty brawler, and they are as heavy as can be. Terry's going to need to put a little bit more oomph onto the punches for each different time. Make sure Ganondorf's able to fill them, but you can see, Terry, they don't have any problem making them feel the Fist of Rage. They don't have any problem making sure that they constantly feel the pressure here, but the Ganondorf, now at 120% right there, starting to get into that point where they're doing a little bit more oomph with every single one of those hits. Yeah, that they are. They're going to need a little bit more, though. If they're going to confirm this first stock, you can't give Ganon any momentum because that will quickly turn into a stock off of you. Meanwhile, you do see that the, the number percentages oh. are getting a little bit more even. That gap is closing as now Terry is in the 80 percentile. They're going to try and throw out some of the utility. Not going to be able to land, though. And they get behind the Ganon. That could have been it, but they landed a combo. And now... It looks like Ganon has a little bit of rage to work with, but they're not going to be able to use it. They get sent into the blast zone and will lose their first stock. That is great to see from the Terry. It's starting to feel themselves a little bit more here. As I, I don't know if you noticed there, but we are seeing a, a, quite a few whiffs from Terry in this instance. So yet again, a whiff on the throw. We've seen a couple whiffs on that dropped kick that they try to bring in there. But now with the go button brought in as a resource, they are a very, very powerful force to be reckoned with. Ganondorf actually wants to try and wipe out this character as soon as possible. Because with this go button, Terry becomes a character who can lay in that damage stick. We were talking about you need to hit him a little bit harder. Well, guess what? Terry has the tools at their disposal to do just that. Another stock back-to-back -back consecutive stocks. Yeah, this Terry is looking really good right now. And you got to keep in mind, they already got a three-stock win over Banjo and Kazooie. Now they're looking to get another stock win over this Ganon. Two stocks now to one. Go Meter still active, but that big boot from Ganon will bring us back to one stock apiece. And gets rid of the go button as well. A very big thing to be able to utilize because, right, Camden, Cornell, they were doing such a good job of just taking in the blows, taking in the punishment, and saying, okay, now that I have my go button, I'm able to go in here. This is where things get really scary for you. Right on the ledge. What a beautiful read off this Ganondorf that just send him down to the abyss. Yeah, but you got to give it up to that, Terry. I mean, they were able to take the last stock off of Wolf, three stock the Banjo and Kazooie, and then take two stocks off of Ganon. So not a bad showing at all. That is a total of six stocks for them. Still a great showing. But now let's get ready to see who the next pick will be going into this matchup. Coming from Cornell Esports, it is going to be Shulk. And you know what? I'm all here for it. Let's go. Uh, yeah, here we go. I. This is such a weird matchup. I didn't plan my day around thinking Ganondorf, uh, Shulk. I'm not going to lie to you. I knew I was going to see a Shulk sometime today, but Ganondorf I've seen twice now. And Benedict times Ganondorf has been leaving an impression here. I, I'm curious. Shulk, known to be a fantastic player for Cornell, right? This player has put in the work, won some tournaments, has put themselves up there on the pe uh, pedestal quite a few times, showing themselves up in top three inside of the land event that we did previously. I, I want to see how they deal with a Ganondorf now because uh, th the question is, right, we see him use that speed, that jump. I think you're going to be utilizing a lot of that shield art uh, inside of this matchup. Oh, yeah, and you know, that is what's oh. going to make this interesting. But look, they're going all the way off stage. Oh. That's going to be a double. Wait, hold the phone. Wait. It wasn't a double Wait, E-list. He didn't, he didn't fall yet. He hadn't Shulk fallen yet. Didn't go all the way down before Ganon was eliminated. Honestly, they got a freebie. I'm chalking that up to a freebie because that felt like you should have lost the stock there. But regardless, Shulk able to take the last stock off again and then come away technically scot-free. That was such a good gamble, though. Like, we can't just glance over it. The, the Shulk jumped down purposely to catch the recovery of Ganondorf. 
That's actually so gigabrain to be like, yo, I'm going to stop your recovery by taking the blow. I have better recovery than you, so I can float up in the air a little bit longer than you can. And I just ate up your recovery. That is that that was beautiful. Great stuff from the show. Great leadership. And that shows the experience of the player paying off. Now, Schultz with three stocks still. Gets to go into the next member of Benedictine. And remember, this is their second to last player. And it's time. It's time. The Battle of the Blondes coming at you here. JRPG protagonist fight it on out. Cloud taking on Shulk. Well, here you go. I mean, not to mention, this is also a battle of the sorties, too. I mean, you literally have Cloud, who has been the favorite uh, of a lot in the Smash community, even to, you know, my discredit, as you know, I don't think they are the greatest, but there are some that definitely would argue that they are. But with that being said, we're already well and underway, and you can see Cloud already getting a good chunk of damage in, and you have to wonder what type of art are we going to see coming from Shulk to try and counter the Cloud? Are we going to see the speed, the jump? Are we going to see the bust? I mean, there's just so much that you can use here, but what is the key to defeating Cloud? Now remember, uh, from the side of Cornell, they actually have a Cloud player on their roster as well. So it's a player, it's a matchup that they have the option to actually get a little bit more knowledge beforehand to be able to have that. And that's a very important thing. Limit is now available. Let's see what kind of Cloud this is. If they're going to be able to, if they will just throw this limit break out immediately they use it for the recovery which i personally am a big fan of in a lot of matchups saving that limit break for the recovery and then mixing them up with your matchup you have a lot of good moves that you're able to utilize and save that limit break for something that's big that's able to start things off spike misses from the shulk and now you can see it right there smash them off to the side shield won't save you yeah, they tried to break it out, but you know what? I got to tell you, uh, if they're going to go up against this cloud, I think while they're on stage, they just need to use speed art. And there you go. You can see the speed art does come out. This is where they can get an advantage over cloud because cloud is quick, but they're not necessarily speedy. So if you bring out that speed art, you should be able to get somewhat of an upper hand, chip away at the damage. And then when you get cloud off stage, bring out the smash art, bring out the buster and then finish up. So far, it is a great stock that has been taken off of a mon on him coming from the side of benedictine but they're getting right back to work trying to get the revenge looking to go ahead and lay in the herd goodbye shulk good night sweet prince and now the stock advantage for cloud they almost have limit break almost saved up for themselves as well buster has been brought out but you look at this limit break cross slash hitting them and this cloud ever so aggressive in your face i'm loving it they are constantly looking to be the aggressor flying into the face of this show show with that jump gone it's going to have to utilize speed they're going to try and have to use something to get a little bit of an advantage but this cloud's aggression cannot be stopped it doesn't seem like it can. I mean, look at Shulk already in the 100 percentile trying to just stay alive as the smash art does come out. This could be huge. Again, being able to use that smash art should be able to work, but no cloud able to find the opening first to get the final stock off of Shulk and getting that round win. Well, in the Battle of the Sorties, Cloud comes out on top. So Cloud doing a good job for themselves in that. I'm a big fan of the aggressiveness. I'm a big fan of how they utilize their limit break. We've actually seen a lot of clouds. I was talking about it earlier on inside this very matchup of how cloud is the most common denominator of players inside of the uh, the MEC. We've seen more clouds than any other character. Hey, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I love the fact they're doing it. Good use of the limit break. Probably the best usage of the limit break that we've seen so far from a cloud inside of the MEC. And now we're going into our next matchup. What do you have, Cornell? Is, is this the cloud play or is it a cloud v cloud ma mirror matchup? No, it's the Robin coming out. Yep, that it is. That's going to be rather interesting, too. I mean, considering that Robin is, you know, such a horizontal zoner, like you had mentioned earlier, you know, and Cloud, they don't really have the most aerial abilities. Uh, Cloud is a very horizontal slasher themselves. I mean, even their up B isn't the best. <laughs> their recovery isn't the best. So they're going to have to go straight forward into this matchup. And right now they're doing a pretty good job of it. I mean, they're not giving Robin any room to work with so far. 
Yeah, that's what you need to do, right? The the pros for both of these characters are the cons for both of the characters, right? Cloud wants to get up into your face, doesn't have great zoning tools, as you were talking about. They are a much more neutral fighter inside of the game. You want to see them go onto you in the neutral stage. You want to see them fighting that horizontal plane, as you were talking about earlier on. Robin wants to stay on that horizontal plane, but wants to keep the distance, wants to keep zoning you out. Their biggest weaknesses, Robin doesn't want to be close to people. Cloud they want to be as close as possible. They got a giant sword for a reason. They're here to swing it and lay in the heart. Yeah, that they are. And look at this off the edge guard already. You can see they're nearly able to get this first stock off of Robin. And there it is, the back air, which appeared to be a back air, could be mistaken, but it does land. And also another thing that I would like to address here, and by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, having that fully charged limit doesn't that also give a speed boost to cloud as well if you know they don't use the limit break they just build it up and they get the full limit meter filled does that give them a speed boost uh for me i'm gonna be honest with you when i do it i my i use the limit so quickly i just immediately like, like yeah nope it's just something for me to utilize uh to immediately go into it uh most of these players out here you look at it it's not really giving you a boost of any kind here right the the biggest thing that makes you feel like it's giving you that boost is because you do have that like blue after effect that's on you making you feel like you're zooming throughout the map but <laughs> get that limit break you want to just use it to either go for a cross slash or keep it for that up B for the enhanced recovery it gives you because that is one of your biggest weaknesses as Cloud. You get taken off stage, you're immediately going to get put into that issue there as you can see it constantly. I love how this Cloud, every single time they knock them off and they're like, I can't continue the aggression, limit break charged. Oh yeah, and look, they're already charged it all the way back up, gets the up B and gets the second stock off of Robin. But Robin, I'm assuming, should be able to come through with this revenge stock quickly as they do manage to block the cross slash and now cloud off onto the edge oh. does get hit there by the fire as they look to try and get this uh second stock but cloud again just gonna make this a lot more difficult for robin really good use of the cross slash here by the way using it to confirm inside of the mid neutral here many a times the hitbots for it's a little bit wider than a normal swing too so you're able to actually confirm a little bit more if you're sitting on the platform but finally robin's able to finish off things there that 60 percent, which is the scary thing to be inside of but they do dodge out as cloud almost finished up their limit break at the very end there so that could have been a catastrophic situation even stock to stock four to four between both of these schools here as benedict times trying to finish things off to make sure that they're go into the last stock with a favorable advantage for themselves as cornell is going to continue Trying to lay in that aggression with this Robin. Try and get that percentage building so that way they can look for that KO blow to find something decisive to finish things off. But look at Cloud, that limit break cross slash. Not going to be able to find the killing blow that way. But they'll find it there. Oh, they barely are able to survive it. Good stuff coming out from the Robin. They're just getting flung around, though. Yeah, eventually they will go down all the way up into the blast zone, and that will be the end of our dear Robin. But Cloud looking very strong, and also got to give Robin credit. You know, they were able to take two stocks off of Cloud and, again, really make them work for it there. So you just made your next teammate's job a whole lot easier. And speaking of which, let's see who they're going to be bringing to the fight to try and finish off Cloud coming from court. Now it is incineral. Uh... This is an interesting matchup, uh, just from the pure fact of Incineroar wants to get up into your face, has a lot of tools of dealing with the the, the sorties, I feel like. Uh, has a lot of cool things that you can actually do to interact with them. And also, um, your two characters that both don't have the greatest of uh, ways of dealing with recovery or anything like that. Right, it does become a bit of a situation of that, but you both have some very big, heavy hitting moves. The big ones from both sides to keep our eyes on is Cloud using the cross slash. They actually are able to just focus on the limit break cross slash just because they shouldn't be focusing on out of stage game uh, against an Incineroar like this. Uh, while Incineroar, they have that lariat, they have those throws. That's something that we're gonna have to keep our eyes on too many a times. And you can already see actually using that air slash coming in with that limit break does a huge chunk of damage in Cinderor. Oh yeah, I mean, they are already 
I don't want to say they're pretty much eliminated at this point, but it's pretty close that they are nearly done with that stock. But, you know, look at this. It doesn't take many moves to already put Cloud back into the 70th percentile. But here we go. There goes the forward throw, and it does even add more damage. And all it's going to take is just one solid hit. The limit break is activated. There it goes, and the oh. cross slash was there, but it didn't confirm. And Cineroar is still holding on. Yeah, good stuff, actually. That was a little bit of mind games coming out from Incineroar. They do get eliminated on that stock, but you got to give credit where it is due. They played uh, mind games with the Pledge there. They read the Cloud like a book. The Cloud has been doing this many a times where they actually turn around and use that cross slash on to the defensive when they play ledge guard, which is a very traditional strategy for a cloud to be able to go for. It's pretty good to be able to go for. Cloud can actually finish things off. Oh, no, the drop kick. Oh, he went for it and went straight into oblivion with it. That is a feels bad scenario. Cornell on their last stock. Now that they are cloud though barely hanging on to their final stock Ooh. as that should do it the throw gets the elimination animation but it's not enough to confirm 150 percent still trying to build that limit but no that should have oh. been it where was the clothesline where was it that should have been the end good counter coming out there cloud being able to survive a little bit longer they got that rage building as well remember with limit break cut already charged up one clash cross slash can actually finish off the incineroar if they're not careful they're going to get thrown they're going to be looking for it they want that heat but it's going to be the net that gets thrown over they get discombobulated but they will recover as they utilize that limit break to make sure that they'll be able to stay alive for a little bit longer now the limit break is going to have to get charged back up and there it goes let's run it on back go back to the other side of the arena they finally finished off the last stock in the cloud but benedict time the last player three stocks against the incineroars one you know what that was nuts too just because again cloud at like 150 percent was able to eat a clothesline you can eat that once there's no way you're gonna eat it twice <laughs> meanwhile we get to see the last player going up against this incineroar so let's get ready to see who is going to be coming out to try and get the win for benedict team and it's none other than falco i feel like we've seen this before you know like <laughs> the falco versus incineroar coming in and i mean this is a good thing for the i, I personally really like the falco in this matchup um just because of the fact of yeah incineroar has some big heavy hits they can hit you with Falco, if they get momentum onto their side, they can just juggle the Incineroar. And Incineroar doesn't really have a lot of tools to be able to deal with that. They are very much so like, I want to grab you. I want to throw you. I want to hit you with some meat hooks of lariats. I want to hit you with all of these different tools in my disposal. But a lot of those tools require for you to be in that neutral state, right? Or be in a horizontal plane from them. Falco, they're going to be above you, making you taste their, their, their feet. They're going to be below you, making you taste their wings. This is not looking good for the Incineroar. They will drop down to the Blast Zone, and it's below. Yeah, I was going to say, is Falco the new Cloud for this week? Like, last week, Cloud was the highest pick rate, without a doubt. This week, <laughs> it, it seems like it's just all Falco. I think a lot of these players that have been playing for a long time, right? If you're looking for a character that was like a cool character to play from back in the days of Melee all the way up until now, Falco's always been that guy, right? Like a lot of those Smash players who have that experience, it, it makes a lot of sense for people to be like, yeah, you know what? I, I like me some Falco. Who would have thunk? All right, but now. Yeah. We're going to have ourselves a little bit of a longer break here to get ourselves ready for our last two matches of the day. So make sure you do not touch that browser as we will be right back with some more MEC action.